Gold is often seen as a safe investment in times of economic uncertainty. And these days, prominent investors like George Soros are placing big bets on the precious metal. Prices have been surging lately, and gold stocks are among the top performers in 2016. Now, a new book by a Wall Street veteran argues gold is the currency you can't afford to be without. Jim Rickards is the author of The New Case for Gold, joins us from New York. Jim, thanks for being here. There's been certainly a resurgence in the popularity of gold. Let's start with that. Why now? Well, uh, gold uh, takes on different characteristics at different times, Peter. Sometimes it trades like a commodity in the commodity complex. Sometimes it trades like an investment in terms of uh, investor portfolio allocations. But sometimes it trades like money. I call gold a chameleon. I actually think of gold as money. <laughs> But right now, the increase in the dollar price of gold is just a reflection of the decline of the dollar. So it's sort of a vote of no confidence in central bank policies. Investors are looking around saying, we're losing confidence in central bank money. We'd like another form of money. Thank you very much. It's called gold. So that's part of the reason uh, gold is going up. But again, when I see the dollar price of gold is going up, I don't think gold is going up. I think the dollar is going down. Fair enough. Uh, it, the, the textbooks would tell you that it's a hedge against inflation, but you look around and, and we're, we're dealing more with the possibility of deflation than anything else. So uh, how, how does that square? Is it doing that chameleon thing that you talked about? Well, the textbooks tell you it's a hedge against inflation, which it is, but the history books tell you that it's the best hedge against deflation. Huh. Uh, the longest sustained period of uh, deflation in U.S. history uh, was 1929 to 1933. That was the longest period of deflation we ever had. The price of gold went up 75 percent from $20 an ounce to $33 an ounce. Uh, just two weeks ago, Ken Rogoff, former chief economist of the um, IMF and uh, Professor Harvard said emerging markets economies should devote 10 percent of their reserves to gold. Uh, so imagine a Harvard professor and IMF economist saying buy gold. And he said don't worry if it's in short supply the price will go up. Uh, see what, what happens Peter is that uh, governments are desperate to avoid inflation. Governments actually want inflation. They tell you that. That's part of their policy. But they've tried everything. QE1, QE2, QE3, helicopter money, currency wars, Operation Twist, forward guidance. They tried everything and cannot get the inflation. But there's one way to get inflation, which is just make the price of gold higher. The government, the Fed could walk in, take a vote, come out and say, Ladies and gentlemen, as of now, the price of gold is $5,000 an ounce. We're a buyer at $49.95, a seller at $50.50. We got the printing press and the gold in Fort Knox. We're going to make a two-way market. Well, if they do that, there's your inflation. Because if gold went up that much, you know, oil would be $10 a gallon at the pump. Silver would be $100. Oil, coal, wheat, steel, everything would go up. So you can always get, when you're desperate to avoid deflation, you can get inflation by raising the dollar price of gold. It worked before, it'll work again. That, that $5,000 spot on gold, I, I think I heard you on CNBC saying it, it, it'll likely go a lot higher than that. Yeah, I expected to go to $10,000. I was using $5,000 yeah. as yeah. an example. <laughs> yeah, uh, by the way, there was a, a, a chief economist, one of the chief economists at PIMCO, largest bond dealer in the world, owned by Allianz, one of the largest insurance companies in the world. He came out two weeks ago and suggested, actually what I just described was in my book in 2011, but he said the same thing. He said, you can just make the price of gold $5,000. I expect it to go to $10,000. That's the implied non-deflationary price. When I say that, you know, people think I pull a number out of the air to get attention or be provocative. It's not true. It's basically take all the gold in the world, take all the money in the world, at least the major economies, divide one by the other uh, using, a, say, 40 percent backup of gold. You get to $10,000 an ounce. That's, that's the price gold would have to be to restore confidence in the monetary system without causing deflation. So it's not a guess. It's actually uh, there's mathematics behind it. Uh, the, the body of your work, this currency war is the death of money, now the new case for gold. The, the takeaway certainly feels like we should be worried about the stability of, of international currencies. Is that fair? Well, we, we should be. I am talking about the collapse of the international monetary system. When I talk about that, by the way, it's happened three times in the past hundred years, 1914, 1939, and 1971. So this does happen every 30 or 40 years ago. And I am talking about it, Peter. You're right. I have been. But I'm not the only one. No. Um, I actually uh, recently had conversations with Ben Bernanke, a former chairman of the Federal Reserve, and John Lipsky, the only American who ever headed the IMF, interestingly, 
Uh, two conversations 9,000 miles apart, but they both used the same word to describe the international monetary system. They said it's incoherent. And I know they didn't rehearse that for my benefit. That's in the air. What it means is there's no anchor. There's no gold anchor. There's no dollar anchor. We did have a sort of a de facto dollar standard from 1980 to 2010. There's no Taylor rule. It's, we wake up every day and it's jump ball uh, in terms of currency valuations. That's why you have the currency wars. That's a very dynamically unstable system. It will collapse unless there's some kind of effort at reform. I think uh, countries like Canada or France or others could actually be leaders in calling for an international monetary conference. And I think that would be welcomed by, uh, by the, uh, you know, the heads of the IMF, BIS, G20, and other central banks. I, I felt like the carpet's been slipping out from underneath us this whole time. We've run out of time, but thank you so much. The book is a new case for gold. Jim Rickards, thanks for coming on the show.